Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's the podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in the sense that, you know, usually I talk about like video games, movies, television, or whatever. And I mean, sometimes I have had a focus on like, you know, internet content broadly, but it's not like a focus of the show obviously but um lately i've been inspired by a lot of con a lot of um the ads that twitter x whatever you want to con whatever you want to call it um they've been feeding me a lot of ads for liver king um and basically i've just been sucked into kind of this wormhole with his content and so i guess i want to try and use this episode to organize my thoughts around like what is like what is his content post you know the con and for those of you who know liver king you know what i'm talking about and i guess what is kind of the appeal both in i guess an ironic but also kind of in a more serious way so laying down the groundwork who is liver king so for those of you who don't know liver king for a while was i mean he still is like this kind of large internet personality but for um a while he was like this real beefy bulky dude that would make like the podcast rounds and stuff like that and his claim to fame was that he got his mass he got his size not from steroids but what what he considers the quote-unquote primal lifestyle right um and Again, as we go into this episode, I'll I'll try and explain how um, discerning what that means by the primal lifestyle gets really confusing. But yeah, that was his claim to fame that you know he was all natural, that he was this you know he was he and he was like huge, like really huge, even for like you know again somebody that claimed to be natural. But um, eventually, I I don't know if it was like an article or a book or something revealed that no he's he was obviously lying he was taking he was taking steroids like not only taking steroids but i think it was like upwards like of eleven thousand dollars worth of steroids monthly or something like that and effectively that just killed like a lot of i mean I, again i'll try and explore that later but that that was obviously like a big selling point for you know his content was um you know like selling this like primal like lifestyle to people it's like oh this is how i got big so fast forward to I, like this controversy i think happened i i don't know exactly it was like 2018 i think it was sometime before covid um but okay fast forward to today and where i find his con is you know these ads from his from his brand being recommended to me and so doing a deep uh, you know doing kind of a deep exploration to it i want to see what is his content post the con like how does he draw himself like how, how does he portray himself to the larger world now that you know the jig is up the renegade has been made so first and foremost in regards to his grift like how much does he actually believe what he's saying and i think in navigating that question it's a lot more complicated than i think a lot of people would you know suggest it to be because you know, it's easy just to say, oh, he, you know, everything, you know, he thinks everything, you know, he doesn't believe anything that he's saying. But I wonder if there's been any other like content creator or video essayist that's kind of explored this topic of like the grift mindset and how it kind of warps your uh, psychology. Because I've noticed this trend where you have like kind of a lot of these, you know, grifter content creators. Right, that you know, that's that what happens is they start off knowing that what they're pushing is like a lie, but I, I wonder, like, with time, if their mind like kind of tricks them into like believing what they're saying you, because you see this, because you do see this from time to time, where, um, especially with a lot of conservative, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? I, I guess pundits or ideologues where, you know, you get stories of like sometimes they, you know, might not have necessarily started off believing what they believe but over time as like a means of like, I guess to save the ego or to save like one's like psyche, you just kind of drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak. So with Liver King, I really don't know, right? Um, I've noticed with like a lot of his more recent posts and stuff, whenever he has to acknowledge or when he tries to acknowledge the, you know, whole $11,000 steroid um, uh, con, that either he does it in kind of an ironic sense, like, oh, he, like, you know, he's in on the joke, like, yeah, I took the $11,000 steroids, guys, you know, or whatever. Or he kind of denies it in in a more passive way by, you know, either saying, like, yeah, I took the steroids, but it's not the reason why I'm big. Which, granted, like, yes, taking steroids itself doesn't necessarily make you big. But, I mean, again, that wasn't the claim he was making. He was saying that I was this size without steroids not that you know um like that was the crux of like his brand and everything so ultimately i just don't know and honestly i don't think you're ever going to know if i had to theorize i think it's kind of a mix of um things like you know um he probably he's probably like aware that he wouldn't be as big as he is you know in terms of his like musculature if it wasn't for the steroids but maybe he does buy more into his like his primal lifestyle beliefs but again i'm not really sure because there's like a lot of inconsistency with the primal lifestyle beliefs so i don't really know um another topic that kind of comes up is uh well, especially more recently, I've seen that he's uh, collaborated with like a lot of conservative uh, content creators like uh, J.P. Well. Oh, God, what's his name? Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Let me look this up. J.P. Wells? No, it's not J.P. Wells. Damn it. Who is it? He, he did. Um, he did like. Uh, like if meat eaters acted like vegans, meat eaters. Vegan. Um, JP. Oh, what's his name? His his channel is Awaken with JP, but um, I, I can't remember for the life of me what his uh name is. But anyways, he he did a recent collaboration with him. He had a shorts video where he um. Uh, you know, was hanging out at like some rave or something with Dan Crenshaw. I don't know. It's it's weird. Um, does this like kind of indicate his own political beliefs? I'm. That's. That's kind of difficult to say because I think first and foremost, like a lot of people will tell you, uh, the Liver King is for the cloud, right? He'll collaborate with anybody and everybody that he can to build his brand. I mean, again, I can't necessarily fault him for that. That's just the game, you know, uh, in order to build yourself, especially on, like, social media. Um, so, again, I, I don't really know. It's, like, one of those things, like, again, with the whole, like, grift thing, you can't really know what his actual beliefs are. That, I mean, ultimately, he's not, like, an ideologue. You know, I don't think he would die on the pedestal of defending conservatism is just like you know because he sells this brand his own brand of hyper masculinity that and that appeals to conservatives that's just where he finds himself i guess um but yeah it, it is what it is i mean maybe maybe there is something because granted i've been able to like look at everything that he's put out because he's put out like a lot of different stuff and Maybe he he is more conservative, and I just you know wasn't able to find where he talks about his politics. Again, I I don't really know, and I don't think that necessarily matters to his. I mean, it kind of matters to his appeal. Okay, so what is the appeal of Liver King, especially like post or even like to some degree like before the con, right? Well, 
one, I think a lot of people, there, there was kind of an ironic appeal to him. You know, he comes off as this very big personality and there is kind of like a ridiculous aspect to, you know, not only like the claims they've reported of him being big without steroids, but like his whole, this idea of the primal lifestyle, which if you try to navigate through it, just doesn't make any sense. So when I first saw his content, I thought, okay, part of this primal lifestyle is just eating raw animal product because he's known for eating raw liver, raw bull testicle, I think, and uh, raw cow heart, you know, just like a lot of raw meat, right? Um, but no, he has, he has like a, sh uh, he has like a lot of content where he, he supposedly posts like his meals and he has a chef that actually cooks him like food so okay it's not a raw foods diet but with meat um okay so is it like keto well no in some of those videos he does eat like potato right which isn't like keto and it's like oh well okay so is it like i mean the closest is it might be like his own twist on paleo but even then i don't know if like all the food that he eats is necessarily like paleo right i mean i don't know what the specific restrictions uh, are for that type of diet i've never been on paleo myself so i wouldn't be able to tell you so it's just it doesn't make any and and even beyond his diet he had like one video where he slept in you know like those weird sleeping bags that people that are you know sensitive to like electrical waves or something sleep in so it like blocks it out. I mean, again, I don't know if it actually works or necessarily the case, the case for that. But um, you know, like he he did another like shorts video where he slept in one of those while staying at a like this fancy hotel. But he's clearly okay with being around recording equipment and being around like a tanning bed. And it just it just. It's just such a mess when you try and like actually determine what is this like primal lifestyle or not. And I think like, I, again, it kind of comes into like this ironic appeal for him as um, a, a creator, because you can see in some of the comments that people are like, you know, still poking fun at him for like the occasionally poking fun at him for like the, um, you know the whole the whole scam that he had with like the steroids and anything uh so there is one an ironic appeal to him two there might be kind of a broader like more earnest appeal to him again he is kind of this like modern paragon of um you know hyper masculinity and that would draw in like you know a more conservative crowd that is into that um and I, I think with that type of appeal, though, there is kind of like an unfortunate aspect to it because, again, I I don't know how much of it is a grift in his own, like how much of what he's selling he believes. Um, but I, I think there's like kind of a part of it where, um, like continuing because it, it's been clear in a lot of his posts that. Uh, you know, what he's doing to his body in terms of, like, the steroids and, you know, I guess even to some degree, like, his diet and everything is, like, negatively hurting his body. Like, he, there's some videos in which he, like, he, like, tore one of his biceps, so he has to put his arm in a sling, but he's, like, still, like, doing these insane workouts or whatever, and, um... Yeah, I mean, it has to, like, hurt yourself to, like, you, you can't admit that, um, yeah, I'm taking steroids. Like, you have to keep up appearances of, like, yeah, I'm taking steroids and, you know, and stuff like that, even though it's, like, it's, like, slowly killing him in many ways. Um, but, so, I, I, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that, like, he, he, I think, in part, has to kind of appeal to that, like, hyper-masculine audience to, to him. But for me, I'm kind of in the camp of, I, I kind of ironically like him 
uh, you know, there is kind of this fascination with, like, I, I find it fascinating intellectually. You know, like, I'm able to right now talk 15 minutes about this this guy, right? So it's like kind of, there's an ironic appeal, there's an intellectual appeal, but there's also, I, I've talked about before in, I, I think um, I was talking with, uh, like, another creator one time about this, uh, Lupo, I think, yeah, Lupo, I had him on the show a little while back and I, you know, I went on his stream and talked a little bit and, um, one of the points I brought up is that I'm really into the food tuber scene, right? And in kind of a twisted way, he, he kind of fits that, um, that niche for me because again a lot of his content is the, the content i'm especially focused on is like his his food content like watching what this guy supposedly eats for dinner and just i don't know it's it's part of my like primal my my primal brain and just seeing food and being drawn to it right um not to say that i would ever try anything that uh you know his diet at all and i guess i should have said this earlier but you know n not really the most professional podcaster here but yeah i don't i don't encourage his lifestyle or anything like i i, I can't believe i have to say this but raw animal product can lead to salmonella and other foodborne illnesses uh he's just messing up his body complete you know he's just messing up his body um so yeah, I, I don't <laughs> just don't do it. Just don't do it. It's it's not worth it. it it's it's just, it's just not worth it. Um, but yeah, I I, I like seeing um, you know him supposedly eat these foods because again, it's there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not he actually eats like what he claims to eat. Um, like, or if it's just for show, which which isn't a problem only with Liver King. Like, I think there's a lot of, like, food tube creators where I question if they actually eat everything that they make. Like, I'm sure there has to be, like, one or two that they, they actually don't, that they just show themselves taking, like, an initial bite, and then it's, like, a conveniently, like, a quick cut, and that's, like, to the other bite, you know? Um... So yeah, I don't necessarily know that with Livery King, especially if you, I, I think one commenter did like the math because there's like supposedly a uh, sped up version of him eating um, like, a, you know, like a cow heart or like a bull heart or whatever. And like, it's like that heart alone, if you were to eat in one sitting, is like thousands of calories, right? Like no human would like... There's just no way. There's like no way. But um, again, I don't know. God, I'd love to. I mean, I I would never get like um a real answer. But I think talking to like his chef, which you know he introduces, it's Chef Lyle in his videos. Like God, if if he would ever come out with a memoir, like let's say hypothetically, like he gets let go from like the Liver King, like media company or just from i mean i don't know how his content is like organized from a business sense but like if he ever gets let go and he publishes a tell-all memoir god i'd love to read that i'd love to that'd be so fascinating to read i mean i don't think it's ever going to happen anytime soon and um and what's worst is like with somebody like that you you can never get like a real interview with them I mean, not the type of interview like he had because he has done interviews and I think he still does interviews. Um, but you can never get like real answers from him, which for me would just be, make it kind of pointless because uh, trust me, I've tried interviewing somebody as a character and it didn't like necessarily turn out well. But um, I'm trying to think if uh, there's anything else I had to say. I, I guess. I, I don't, again, I'm not, like, necessarily, like, a review podcast, like, in general. I just don't review media or stuff like that. Um, I mean, I, I say I don't review media, but technically, I guess this counts as, like, a form of review. Uh, but, um, 
yeah, would I recommend Liver King's content only if you're like curious? Like, don't subscribe to him, obviously. But uh, I guess every so often, if you want to just watch what this, if you have like this weird niche for like YouTube content, um, I mean, he has also uh, been a part of the YouTube circles. Like, he, he, I think he has at least at one time collaborated with. Um, God, I can never remember. He's like Italian. He's like kind of a beefy guy. Uh, you know, he collaborated with him at one point. Um, so I, I think there is at least some awareness on his end that, like, oh, he does appeal to people that you know are into the food tube scene. So I, I don't know if I could say I necessarily recommend his content, but again, like. Uh, I, I guess just for the curiosity of it, or if you'd maybe just, I, I can't even say like to hate watch his content. Yeah. If you're just curious about like anything I've talked about here, check out liver King. I mean, yeah, check out liver King. He's on YouTube. You can find him on Twitter X or whatever. Uh, he's probably on TikTok for, you know, as long as that, as long as we in the States have it here, you know, uh, really one really curious how that's going to turn out. Um, but yeah, I think that's just gonna do it for me. Um, uh, before I let you go, I have to announce that this, uh, podcast and all my other episodes, at least for YouTube system, I can't necessarily guarantee it on, uh, Spotify or things like that is now available through the Creative Commons license. So if you want to react, remix, whatever, um, to this video you're free to do so if you have any issues with copyright just let me know and if for whatever reason you're listening to this episode and you are paying to listen to it you are getting scammed so i'm sorry you had to find out this way uh catch y'all later